So Lucy, yeah. Yeah, thank you for having me here. I would like to ask you a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. Um, first of all, uh, Lee Shobai's uh, motto is innovation generates mm -hmm. um, from self-discovery. Mm -hmm. What is behind this motto? To answer this question, uh, first I'd like to introduce myself and I'm the daughter of the artist Lee Shobai. Um, actually, uh, my father first, um, uh, it's like a couple of work because my mom established the Shobai art brand uh, the brand name after my father and at first like they uh, in 2000 I remember it's in 2004 um, they just like uh, uh, start like to, they want that they established a company and they just want to promoting the high pie culture uh, and and also manage my father's uh, artistic practice uh, but after years and years um, I, I guess their concept, their uh, concept of, about pr promoting and preserve Shanghai's culture, uh, actually it does uh, motivate, I think it's motivated a lot of people and attract them, especially attractive the, the young generation to join us. Uh, and to join us, and right now it became, it's, uh, it, it, it became like a teamwork. Uh, it became a, a new, a creative brand. Uh, we are involved uh, right now. We are involved with like uh, uh, art aspired product design, uh, the creative designs, and also involved like uh, an educational programs. Uh, it also be, uh, they are all of our projects. We have only one concept. It's just like to preserve the Shanghai's culture. Um, actually, I think the the very core motivation is also about the family, the world's family. Because um, as I remember, my grandfather is also the artist uh, in Shanghai. Uh, but my grandfather is like, uh, it's a paper cutting artist. And uh, my father was raised up in an artistic family uh, when he was a child. And he started to learn paper cutting when he was six. And my, my grandfather also like uh, established a, a Shanghai Paper Cutting Association, like in yeah in like a, a decades ago, and so it's just like a family mission, or like or I can say it's like a family legacy, uh, in the Lee's family right now. Yeah, so uh, after like. Uh, for me, it's, it's the, the third generation. After the third generation, we find ourselves, we carry, uh, it's like our responsibility to carry on our uh, local culture, our cultural background, and to promote it like to, to everyone. Or we say we have to find a way to preserve this culture and to make it closer and make it, make it closer to everyone's lives and homes. Do you think this culture is in jeopardy, like uh, the current <laughs> society that is so modern, so like uh, technology is invading us? Do you think that that is affecting like something so, as traditional as the, the art in your family? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes because like uh, uh, you can also feel that like uh, our our daily past life is is quite it's it's too soon. I always say too it's fast. too quick. It's too fast. Yeah, it's too fast. Uh, sometimes you you also like some uh, you forget about something you forget about the traditions forget about w where we came from especially yeah and also we right now like too much focusing on uh, globalization international yeah international right yeah so sometimes like uh, we are just looking we we're just looking straight but never look back so I guess this is our our concept our uh, opinion is like sometimes we need to, we, we, we we have to like make our path slow slow down and just look back a little bit more and to look like uh, to look back and our house our traditions where our tradition will goes and find a way to let our the next generation or the younger generation to be familiar with it yeah so this is the basic concept then, at the same time yeah now that I was listening to you, at the same time, what we do here is um, trying to promote high pie yeah. culture. And if you look back in history, and if you think about what actually high pie was, 
it was born in this city that was modern. Shanghai was one of the most modern cities in the world. And things that were going on here, uh, it was fascinating. Everybody wanted to be here, just like now. So if you think about Shanghai right now, and if you think about Shanghai back then, the difference, all right, of course, it's an immense difference in terms of development of technology, but at the same time, this is what Shanghai used to be, and this is what people were so attracted to coming here from everywhere. And this is how actually, how actually Hi-Pi culture started. The, the culture of Shanghai is a, is a mix of different, different cultures, Chinese and foreign, and the, the foreign cultures. And this is what we actually try to promote and tell people about. So, um, uh, your question was whether whether it's uh, influencing or it was influencing already uh, Chinese culture because uh, the trunk of the culture still remains Chinese but then the ornaments on the trees like a Christmas tree they come from everywhere in the mm -hmm. world and this is this is what Hai Pai is and I think this is what Hai Pai remains and this is what makes it so attractive and this is why Yishobai's works are so interesting and artworks and everything that we actually do here so um, of course we might forget about it and but then at the same time this is what keeps forming it at the same time I think mm -hmm. so that was makes it interesting yeah well tell us something about uh, the heavy color painting technique I think it's fascinating the way tra traditional, classical, traditional Chinese painting melts mm -hmm. with Western oil painting. So, um, when we talk about heavy color painting, yeah. I guess uh, the most interesting thing about it is that in English the term doesn't really exist, right? Heavy color painting, what is, what is that really? So we had to come up with this term to uh, uh, describe Li, Li Shobai's technique of painting and this is something that he's been working on for a while and uh, keep developing it and keep uh, elaborating it. So what he does is um, he would use uh, traditional Chinese uh, tools, he would use the, uh, the rice paper, he would paint on the rice paper and he would use the pointed brush, just the one that uh, the calligraphers are using or uh, brush painting artists are using in uh, Guahua Chinese traditional painting, and uh, but he, at the same he would also use the same materials. He would use uh, watercolors or gouache mm -hmm. or ink, but um, he would treat the media the same way that the artist would treat oil. So he would apply, he would mix it all together. He would apply a layer by layer on top of another layer. He would let every layer dry first because the um, rice paper is very thin. It is a malleable material, but it is, is a thin one. So once it's once it's wet, it's very easy to tear apart. So this is um, this adds up the um, uh, complexity to his whole process, and uh, this is what makes it so painstaking. He has to wait till every color dries, and then he would apply another color, let it dry, and another another one, and another one. So he reaches this desirable, heavy color painting effect, or uh, this um, radiant, bold, beautiful colors that. Um, that's, that's the thing, so uh, his works are uh, very rich with color and at, at, at from the first sight you wouldn't even know whether it is a, an oil painting or what kind of media has the artist used and that's what's so, mm -hmm. what makes it so interesting. Yes, yeah. it's mm -hmm. very intriguing. Yeah, yeah, and also very interesting because uh, this kind of like combination, it's like a combination of like a Chinese traditional culture and western in the western culture because it looks like, uh, like uh, the oil painting so basically we uh, normally we introduce uh, it's just uh, as general like uh, the oil painting on the rice paper mm -hmm. um, and but this like but this kind of con uh, combination is just exactly like the high pie culture the our the, the very special Shanghai uh, Shanghai culture because it's also observed uh, uh, the different uh, Techniques, uh, techniques mm -hmm. and uh, influences. yeah, and influences from the uh, the other country, from the foreign countries, and also combined with uh, it, uh, like the local culture, and especially the theme in my father's work, in in the in, in Li Shobai's work, it's all about Shanghai's Shikuman, Shanghai Stone Gate, Shanghai's Lady, uh, so it is kind of uh, the culture. It's also touched upon the. Uh, constructions, uh, architect, uh, architects, the uh, fashions, the uh, films and novels, like almost lifestyle, every, everything. lifestyle <coughs> almost everything. So it's just like a, we, we, we can say it's just like a reflect reflection with each other. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, both techniques and the thing and spirits. Mm -hmm. Well, you've mentioned the concept of shikuman. Yeah. I think it's a very powerful concept 
and in Lisho Bai's mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. uh, what is there? What is behind Shikuman? Well, so, so many things, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> what is it like? Uh, what can you tell people about about it? People who don't know. Yeah. You wanna go? <laughs> <laughs> um, like uh, Lisho Bai likes to tell himself. So. And it, well, it's a well-known fact. Shikuman was like a cradle of this high pie uh, culture, and this is where it was developing. Because again, people were coming from all over, Chinese people, and it's not only we're not talking only about foreigners. That's a very important point. Also about Chinese people, they were coming from different provinces. They were coming from the south. There were a lot of rebellions back then, so they were fleeting here, looking for a shelter. So once they came here, they had to leave somewhere, and then uh, these wars and wars and. Um, uh, of Shikuman residences they would build uh, where all these people used to live. And imagine that people, of course, at the beginning it was just one family occupying the, the, the house or two families. And then later on as there was an influx of people, as there were more people, they would share the Shikuman residences with people coming from different areas, sometimes even foreigners. So imagine this mix of cultures. Somebody cooks Sichuan cuisine, which is very spicy. Someone mm -hmm. is cooking, what, Shanghainese? What is actually Shanghainese yeah. cuisine? I don't know. It's, well, it's a seafood, but yeah. then it's again, it's a lot of um, different influences. So here you go, this is the cuisine. Someone speaks different dialects. So uh, Shanghai, like a, Language. like a sponge absorbed yeah. this, all the different words from from different languages as well, from English and from yeah, French yeah. and from, yeah, from right, and then uh, from other dialects. So imagine that, uh, yes, actually, Shikuman residences is where this Shanghainese culture mm -hmm. that we call Hai Pai was developing, and that's why uh, this this line of Shikuman is everywhere. It's seen everywhere on his paintings and. Sometimes it's just the residences, and that means that the, the character, the main character, is actually the, the, the residence, the building, the spirit of the architecture, because this is what formed the culture. And you wouldn't see people, there is a presence of people, there would be a, a pot of flower or a cat, or someone was reading a newspaper, the person has just left having a cup of tea or a radio. You would feel the presence, but still, this. It's just going to be the presence of life, the presence of a human being. The character still remains Shukuman. This is why the works are so powerful and beautiful and detailed. The more details, actually, the more you look at it, the more details you will discover about Shanghainese culture. And later on, I guess we will show it, show it to you yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. about the lifestyle and yeah. everything. One, one last question. Uh, I think this one uh, Leah can answer us really well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why for uh, people who come to visit Shanghai, why a piece of art of uh, Little Bai, uh, a piece of art can be the perfect souvenir? Like, um, why encourage them to come here and not to go for a, just a simple thing, but here they can get a special uh, little something from Shanghai? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, People come to Shanghai thinking that Shanghai uh, is a modern city, skyscrapers, mm -hmm. Pearl Tower, uh, financial centers, and etc. etc. That's what, you, what that was. That's what we see on TV. But few people know that this is actually this um, this subject. So subject matters that Li Shou Bai is capturing on his artworks. This is what actually Shanghai is, and this is what Shanghai used to be, and this is where the roots come from, and this is where the history and the culture comes from. So you could see it everywhere. You could see it on his artworks. You could see it on um, whatever product that you choose here that was un inspi inspired somehow by his artworks. 60% uh, of Shanghai was covered with this uh, Shikuman residences that Li Laoshe is painting. And uh, very people don't actually have much time, I would imagine, to stroll around the alleyways, the, 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 um, yeah, stroll around the city center, French concession, we call it now, but there were many concessions, and not only French concession, but everybody knows the bun, the English were there, but then this, I think the heart of Shanghai is, uh, is captured on Li Shoubai's works. And then just even to come here, and um, we just like to tell people about it because even not for just come for the experience I think would be great because what we do we try to raise people's awareness about high pi and try to uh, raise increase people's understanding of what high pi actually is and uh, it's not only the of course it's the gallery but it's through through the paintings through the artworks that we tell this story the story of Shanghai 
So whoever wants to learn more about it is, is <coughs> very, very welcome. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's really, really nice to, to come here. Mm -hmm. And I, I think after people watching you, they, yeah. they will come here and be delighted like to see, wow. Now I'm really taking a little bit of Shanghai back home. Yeah, that's right. Like, like, just like when I entered the, 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 the shop, mm -hmm. I just saw these gift boxes. Mm -hmm. And with the, mm, yeah. <laughs> and I just immediately fell in love and bought one. Yeah. I think it's a lovely, lovely gift. It is. It is. Yeah, it is. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. I hope you can show me around yeah, and explain me some yeah. details. Yes, yeah, And Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank首先呢所以石库门里有猫呢有很多的点我们擦脸的脸盆坏掉了以后应该在门口有一个石库门然后还有我们外滩的老房子也在上海免费的给他们住了一段时间那么我觉得这个包容性看了很多东西以后我是一路上就是坚持这个中国风上海情
So what is actually high pi, many people don't know, and what we uh, represent here is this culture. But then what's behind it? High in Chinese um, is the high of Shanghai. I guess you would have guessed it already. And pi stands for uh, school of art, school of thought. Uh, so it's sort of basically literally translated Shanghai style or the school of art, school of thought, but Shanghainese. And so it was very, it was always opposed to Jing Pai, which is Beijing, the Jing, the Jing of uh, Beijing, uh, of a traditional conservative Beijing culture. And for centuries, it used to be only one uh, Beijing culture and it was rooted in tradition. But then what happened here is because is that Shanghai stepped away a little bit from the tradition and let all the influences enter, enter the um, uh, art and culture. And um, there were so many radicals. Uh, it was really thriving city. There were radicals from all over the, uh, the world, Chinese radicals, thinkers and artists and uh, writers. They were coming back from the East and then they were forming this beautiful culture in here. And um, it was criticized heavily by the uh, Jing Pai critics because it was, it was new, it was, it was different, it was stepping away, it wasn't doing the same thing that has been done for centuries. So at first it was looked down upon and at first was coined to describe actually Beijing or, or the High Pai Opera, not Beijing Opera, High Pai Opera. And um, it had to uh, cater to different kind of audiences that was in Shanghai, to foreign audiences and Chinese audience. So it had to be um, facing the mass culture, let's say, or the popular culture. That was, that, that's why it was criticized at the very beginning. And so um, starting from this theatrical opera that was um, called Hai Pai, then it moved on to, the, to writing, to literature, to painting styles, and to everything that was, later on, everything that was created in Hai Pai, in, in Shanghai, was was uh, coined um, or called as high pi, and it didn't have this negative connotation anymore. So this is th this is what very that that's that's what we try to represent here, and so um, we do it and we tell people about it in many different ways, and then we try to have some educational programs or some workshops and some seminars. For example, we do the um, uh, the workshops which are um, aimed at well foreigners and Chinese as well. We're trying to combine wine culture which is the um, predominantly the culture of the western civilizations right and then we put it and mix it together with something traditionally that is traditionally rooted in china so it's the art of wine or the culture of wine with the um, traditional chinese art and that's very high pi that's basically what high pi is all about and um, i think for foreigners especially it's very interesting to learn about it you learn more about wine and then at the same time you learn more about the techniques and about the philosophy of traditional Chinese arts and crafts. So this uh, what we call uh, Shikumen residences and 60% of Shanghai was covered with these residences and um, there were rows and rows and a lot of compounds all over and the important thing was that um, that's the entrance that's the main gate to to the Shikumen residences and once you enter inside there would be um, uh, the alleyways with the actual shikumen, with the stone gates that you've seen of some of the Li Shobai's paintings. Then every, every residence at the entrance, it would have this gate, and then it would have a name. Well, this one is Tianzi Fan, just like the area where we are right now. And then, um, interesting thing was, if, if you would have uh, taken a rickshaw, or if, if someone would take you somewhere, and you would, have say, you would have to say where you're going and where your home is, the first thing you have to say is actually, it's actually the name of the compound. There were no numbers, so it, wasn't, it was impossible to identify each compound by the number, so just the name, and then the rickshaw would already know where to take you. And your house, once you enter, then there is a long alleyway and with, a, with the buildings, with Shikumen residences, and those gates, those were numbered, and this is where you enter to your house, and this is where the courtyards open up to you, and this is where, where your um, living residence would be. So on top of the roofs you would see a lot of um, windows, the attic windows, that you would see them everywhere in uh, Shanghai. They're very, very representative of the Shikumen residences. And um, you would also notice the, the hem right on top of the uh, entrance to the, uh, to the lane. You would see that uh, off the balcony there are, there are pieces of hem uh, drying up there. You would see them everywhere in every courtyard. Um, the bamboo chairs, uh, the the old, they're still they're still everywhere. The bamboo, the small bamboo chairs. People would just sit and chat outside and um, get together with their neighbors. Um, and you would see this um, 
uh, this, you know, this overhead building projection spanning a lane. It, uh, before, uh, the purpose of it was just to uh, connect two parts of the buildings, two parts of the lanes, and it wasn't residential. Or sometimes, uh, because you would see this is right at the entrance of, uh, of the compound, to the compound, so sometimes there would be a guard living there. Um, but then later on it just turned into a residential quarter.